Okay, this is Jeff Baldwin with the Stockton Astronomical Society, and I'm going to have a video on how to set up the Sonny Johnson 10-inch Mead SCT. So, we have this uh, scope buggy here, and sometimes it's with this scope, and sometimes it's with Bab's scope, so right now we're going to do it with that. So, here's the tripod. It looks like that. And you just spread it open like that and put the leg in the hole. In the hole. There we go. Okay, there is a wedge lockdown ring here. We're going to spin it off and set it aside. And there is a tripod locking system, so we screw that one down. We, we always leave it in the tight position up when we're transporting it so it won't shake loose and get lost. So, so when you set up the scope, you have to reposition. Is my voice muddled with this mask? A little bit. Okay, but do you think it can help? And it goes just like that, and then you screw it up. And you screw it on, and that makes the tripod legs rock solid. Now this is a fork-mounted, uh, fork equatorial mount, and the forks act like a tuning fork, which pisses you off when you're looking through the scope. But the tighter you make stuff, the less of that you're going to have to deal with. So you make that nice and tight. Now if you're not real strong, don't make that too tight, because you'll do it when it's warm. You'll take it out in the cold. When it gets cold, metal contracts, and then it'll be so tight you'll never get it off. So heads up on that. This is the uh, polar wedge. So this flat guy here is orthonormal or perpendicular to the polar axis. So this plane needs to be perpendicular to the North Pole. The North Pole is that way, at our latitude up. So I'm going to rotate this guy this way so that the North Pole will be pointing towards the North. That way the clock drive will work. All right, uh, I'm going to have to unscrew this a little bit. And screw this guy higher because that's not high enough. There we go. Somehow that got screwed down. Let's see that. We only want it to protrude about that far. Perfect. And then we tighten that back up. And there's a nut here. I guess you could screw it on tight, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, this guy can now screw onto that. And I'm not going to make it real tight because you'll want to adjust it for polar alignment, but for right now, I'll make it tight. All right, now, this plane is now perpendicular to pointing to the North Celestial Pole. So if you can find North, all you got to do is find the Big Dipper. There's a handle. There's the bowl. The end of the bowl points to Polaris. And the North Celestial Pole is about um, just less than a degree from Polaris. So if you can point it at Polaris, you're probably okay. If you're going to do photography, you want to be more precise than that. But that guy is going to point north. So you can literally look down things like this and see if it's really pointing to the North Star or not. Okay. In the doodad box are three cap screws and an Allen wrench. Three cap screws and an Allen wrench. You need one cap screw in your hand and the Allen wrench and the other cap, cap screw on the ground so you can pick it up and put it right back up here again. <laughs> but we need the cap screw here. Open the box. This 
mine or is this the club? This is mine. <laughs> There's two in here. They're identical. There we go. Okay. So this is heavy. So if you're like a, a slight person, that's actually pretty challenging. So I'm going to move the camera over here. There we go. So on the base of this telescope are these three holes, uno, dos, tres. These two next, the flat guy here, this does not go there, it goes on that one. You're going to screw it in so it goes in four rotations. One, two, three, four. A little bit. So it's hanging out a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on that wedge so that that snags. So, Rick, you might grab the phone and actually put the phone right here looking that way so that they could see what I'm about to do here. So I'm going to take that bolt that's hanging out and I want it to catch on that slot right there. Once it's on that, you can let go. It ain't going to go nowhere. I am going to turn that a couple more rotations, just because it gives me the willies of sitting like that. Okay. Now, there are two more cap screws, and they go in the other two holes. And that is if it's lined up. So we're going to line that up. can't see in the holes. So that's right. Right. It's got to be pretty close. And, all right. So there are these knurled out holes. They're not the right ones. There are these nice holes. They're the right ones. So these cap screws pull those holes. Now notice that we have three cap screws in. Now that all three are in, we can crank them down. Again, if you put some brute force on that and it's a nice 70 degree afternoon, then you do a long observing session and when you tear the scope down, it's uh, 40 degrees out. This metal will contract and if those were on really tight, you ain't going to get them off. The bolts are stainless. It's threading into pot metal. And it's enclosing an aluminum plate. So those are three dissimilar metals. Just aching to contract at different rates. Okay. It is now set up. So, what I like to do is kind of get that guy vertical and look right down that line. There's a ridge right here. And I like to zero in on Polaris so I can loosen that, tilt it around just a little bit, zero it in, just nail it real good. Now for photography, that's not good enough. For, but for tracking, that's fine. Then on, I'm going to grab the phone there, thank you. Right here is a scale. So you can adjust by loosening these guys and those guys, and then adjusting that guy to get the altitude so that you bring this guy horizontal. <laughs> you can look up that ridge and see if you're too high or too low on Polaris. Is this making sense? So you can look to see if you're too high or too low on Polaris that way, and you can see if you're too right or too left on Polaris that way. Your uh, altitude adjustment, you loosen them here, here, you adjust it there, and then you tighten them here, and tighten them here. For your azimuth adjustment, you loosen that guy, rotate to your adjustment, and then tighten it back up. And again, that's fine unless you're doing photography. All right, the scope's set up, but we're not completely there, so uh, this knob here is your spine adjustment for right ascension. 
That's your lock. Can't move it now. You can loosen it just enough so you can still turn it, but it still hangs on. Your definition is this knob right up here. You loosen it. You can adjust it and then tighten it. And then you have your fine motion control right here. This is the electric declination control. You plug it in and use it. This guy turns something in there. And I don't know if it engages like that or like that, or if you're supposed to do something out here. I've never made it work. So uh, I would probably just do it by hand. OK. This is the finder scope. And it goes on this slot right up here. It's a dovetail. I'll rotate around so the camera can see it. Goes right in that slot. Goes right in that slot. There you go. And then we screw both of those guys down. Now you got to be careful because now when you swing your telescope around, that finder scope can hit stuff. So you'll have to be aware of that when you're using the scope. We have a focus back star diagonal all in one unit. And it just screws on the back here. Get in there. All right. Now, if you like that, that's fine. If later on in the night you want it in a different position, you can loosen that, rotate it, and tighten that, and then you can get any position you want. Uh, it is a two-inch hole, so you can either put a two-inch eyepiece in there or a two-inch to one-and-a-quarter inch adapter and put an inch and a quarter eyepiece in, so it'll take both. This is the focus. It, it moves the mirror forward and back, which pushes the, the focus back and forward. Uh, on the front of the scope is a big dust cap. Now, the dust cap keeps falling off. So we have intentionally dented it and taped it so that it offers a little friction and doesn't keep falling off. So that's okay. So we have the Schmidt corrector plate, a spherical mirror in the back, a spherical secondary mirror in there, and the focus back there. If you ever need to collimate it, ask me. I'll collimate it. If you have experience collimating, fine, but uh, I can do precision collimating, so uh, let me know. I'm next to a wall, so it's in a really unnatural position here, but that's okay. We'll get by it. Okay. Pretend I'm not moving this. This is going to be easier if I can move this guy over like that. Okay. We have some stuff to plug into this. This is the direction mover the uh, focuser and a map light. So we aren't going to, we're not going to put in the electric focus. It's a waste of time. So we won't use those buttons. These buttons here, the east and west would probably work, but the north and south won't because we don't have that guy connected. So uh, if you want to move the scope, you can move it quickly or you can put it to two and move it slowly. We're going to have it on quartz. Now, if you're watching stars, planets, or excuse me, stars, galaxies, clusters, nebulae, you'll have it on sidereal. If you're doing solar observing, you'll dial that guy over to solar. If you're looking at the moon, you'll dial this thing down to lunar because these things move across the sky at different rates. Now, we don't have a sun filter, so don't bother with the solar. If you look at the moon, dial it to moon. If you look at anything else, put it on sidereal. This bad boy goes right here on that multi-pin. I forget what you call it. Is that RCA pin? I can't remember. And then that hook can hang on to whatever it's going to hang on to. Right, there we go. Hang on right there. That'll be, be good. Now, when the battery's on it, that little map light right there, when you hit it, it turns on a red LED. So you can use that as a map light. And since it's red, it won't blow away your night vision. 
Okay, now we're going to get some power. Okay, this cord looks like it's been uh, abused pretty badly. So if it doesn't work, you might try uh, resoldering these, but we'll, we'll give it a shot here see if it works. So this is 115 volt to uh, 12 volt. We also have a cigarette lighter thing that goes in here, but the power goes on this button down here that says power 12 volt DC, right there. And then of course this goes into a, uh, a 120, 60 cycle AC outlet. Right there. Alrighty. There is an on button right here. So we go on and uh, I don't see the light coming on the knob moving so it's possible that this needs to be soldered. We have a 12 volt cigarette lighter one that'll work but uh, you might have to check to see if that needs soldering. So anyway, you want it on north. There's a north flexion and a south flexion. You want it on north because we're in the northern hemisphere and you flip it on when you're using and when you're done for the night turn it off. If you don't, you'll go to bed. That thing will keep rotating with its clock drive until it drives itself into the wall or something. Alrighty, so let's say I want to look at something. I can loosen that clutch. Loosen that clutch. Point it at whatever the heck I want to look at. Okay, let's pretend the finder scope is lined up there. So I'll point it at something uh, to get the finest scope going, I'll point it at maybe uh, a tree down the street. I'll lock it in. I'll make sure that the clock drive's not running. I'll make sure the tree's dead center in here. And then I'll adjust these guys to make it dead center in there. And when they're lined up just right, then I can point this at the object I want to look at. When I find it in there, it'll be in there. Of course, I'll have an eyepiece on here, and you can focus it. So that's the setup including some minor polar alignment. When you tear it down, it's backwards of all that. The thing you have to look out for when you tear it down is to not take these bolts out and the thing fall on the ground. So you loosen the top bolt, remove the bottom bolts, so it's just dangling on the top bolt, at which time you can pull it out, set it aside, remove the bolt, and then put the scope back into the case and put all the junk away. Rick, do you want to see that done on video or are we good with that? It's up to you, it's your video. It's just gonna take a minute. So let's go ahead and do it. Since we already got this eaten up. So we're gonna pull the plug. Everything goes in that uh, metal box. We're going to put the ducat back on. And in order to put the scope away, it has to be pointed to itself there. It won't go in the box any other way. Take off the finder scope. Take off the focus back slash star diagonal. It's a two for one uh, unit here. Yeah. 4,000 threads later. Okay, uh, it's always fun to lose your Allen wrench in the dark. So I'm going to loosen and remove the bottom two cap screws. Set them somewhere where you know you'll be able to grab them again, throw them in the box. Now I'm going to loosen but not remove the top cap screw. I just turned it a couple times. Now, 
it's holding the scope, but it's loose enough to slide out. So at this point, you can just, if you're strong, I, don't do this if you're like 92 pounds and you're alone, you know, because this actually has quite a bit of inertia. So now that that's loose, you can slide it right out and set it onto something. That was the dust pad. Need to bend it a little more, I guess. We're going to take that last cap screw out. If you don't take it out, it won't go back in the box. So now that that's out, this guy will go back into the box. And the box shut. Not too bad, except that it's heavy. Cap screws and Allen wrench back in the box. Now, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to take the, the wedge off. Might as well just leave the wedge right there. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Uh, if you want to pack it in your car, you'll have to unscrew this and release the lane. So once you turn that guy, you can slide this up to the storage position. If you don't tighten this, then on the way home from your start party, it will vibrate and unscrew itself, get lost in your trunk, and you'll never see it again. So once that's done, you can take that out, retract your legs, and now that will fit in your back seat. Close the box, load it up, you're ready to go home. That's the basics. There's more details, but that's the basics. All right. Thanks for watching.